Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I am Jackie. If this is the first time you're on my channel, I welcome you. I hope you find something you like, something that is worth sharing, subscribing, commenting, all that stuff below. And if you are a returning viewer, listen, I appreciate you. Like you are the real MVP and I say it every time because I mean it. You come back and you don't have to, but I appreciate you. So Yes, y'all the winners. I'm gonna have to do like some kind of giveaway sometime soon because y'all y'all got me to a thousand subscribers and I'm still celebrating that. But today's video is about me and my last six months right now. Like I'm in in June, I'm going to graduate with my doctorates in um, medical science from AT Still University, and I was like, oh. It's time to make another video because I did a video, I think, after I finished my first year and, you know, I had a year in. Now, this is the last year, last six months to be exact, and I was like, this is the perfect time to make a video for people who are on the path to become a physician assistant, want to get their doctorates, and want to know these things specifically about the program I'm in. Now, listen. I can only speak to the program I am in because I have not gotten my doctorates from any other program or I have not been in any other program to compare. Now, that's the type of research you would have to go do on your own. But if you want to know, um, if you have questions about AT Steel University, I'm here for you. And you can definitely can leave those in the comments below. If you have questions that I do not address in this video, I will have like information for you in my description as well as like the school email address so you can email me and ask questions if you do not feel comfortable asking them in the comments but if you have a question likely someone else does too so anyhow i'm in my last uh semester and let's go back let's go back to the first no like to the past semester so i was taking two classes ethics and um, economics. Now, I really like economics. Call me weird if that makes me weird, but I like numbers. I like concrete things. And it was very informative because I'm very passionate about like health policy, taking care of the people. Why are we spending all this money in our country, but our health care kind of sucks still and people don't have access. Like those things move me, pull me and drive me to want to pursue higher education and delve in, into other areas and fields where I can be impactful. Now, I also was taking ethics and to be completely honest, that ethics class was a lot of work and kind of annoying for me personally. And I think it is because, again, I like concrete things. Ethics seems more feely about what's right and character. And I'm a big believer that we all have character that can be molded and shaped, but we are innately born with some type of character. And I feel that I have, I, I always want to do what's right. And I kind of felt like that class didn't really help me much. <laughs> it's hard for me to give my energy to something that I just didn't really like. And I didn't like the class mainly because some of the rules for writing these discussions were a bit unrealistic to like, I, I sometimes I like to work ahead. So you couldn't, I, I, the class just really, I felt like tied my hands. And the thing about ethics is that, it has a lot of subjective information. So what somebody else may think is completely right may be seen as completely wrong on the grand scale of, and grand scheme of things. But I mean, if anybody follows politics, you can see that ethics is not at the top of anybody's list here. So maybe that's why we have to just take the class and dive in. But I attended a Jesuit undergraduate university and all I got was ethics. So maybe I was just tired of it. I'm not sure. But I finished that class and it, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, especially with the election going on, the holidays coming up. And I had just got married in September. It was a lot. That was a lot. And I just didn't enjoy the ethics. But I'm, I mean, I passed both classes, of course, because I still worked my butt off. And 
I thought I would have more time, but that ethics class was really, really required a lot of work and a lot of reading. Um, and for anybody who is wondering, do I want to get my doctorate? That's a personal question you need to ask yourself. And I think with anything you need to ask yourself, why are you pursuing this? What do you want your doctorates for? Are you getting it for yourself? Are you getting it because of familial pressure? Are you getting it to advance professionally? Are you wanting to be a um, be an administrator, be an educator, want to um, improve clinically? Like, what is your why? That's going to be with anything that you're going to pursue. And in this particular program, it is a two-year or three-year program, and I am currently in the two-year program. I'm actually part of the first cohort of the Doctor of Medical Science program, so that's exciting. I chose the two-year option, and there's three tracks. There's education, clinical, and um, executive leadership. I chose the executive leadership track because my goal is to... Um, Let's see. It's a little mixed goal. So one goal, I want to be like a health policy correspondent on CNN. So I should just really practice that. And then you know, I make sure y'all share this with CNN or something. <laughs> but that is what I would love to be. And then number two is I would love to get in, a, in an administrative role and as a PA. Because I believe that a lot of those positions are not created just for PAs. I see them for physicians. I see them for nurses. And while we are a very critical member of the healthcare team, I don't see us in as, in as many leadership positions. So I believe that having the almost 10 years of experience at the bedside in some capacity as a nurse and then as a PA, well, that, that's 19 years total of experience, but 10 years as a PA specifically, that it would be helpful for me to have a say in what is actually happening and learn the, you know, the little kinks and the makeup of the type of position. But anyhow, um, so I'm in the executive leadership track. I graduate in June by the grace of God. I'm just working on my capstone right now. School actually officially starts the last semester tomorrow. So I wanted to make this video today. And I would say, because I get a lot of people who are like, is this program doable? Is it affordable? What do I need to do? Can I just... It, so this is what the gist of it is. It is set up. This is a two-year program. I don't know the three-year because I didn't take that one. But for the two-year program, it is set up where you are taking two classes outside. I mean, two classes for 10 weeks. The only classes that you aren't taking with any other class are the capstone classes. And there are three of those. So I'm in third capstone right now. So I don't have any other classes, but the capstone classes are a lot of work because you're basically working on your capstone. Um, the classes range from medical writing because you have to write a capstone. <laughs> and if you're doing research, writing is important. Um, there's also like social determinants of health, which is a, one of my favorite classes. That and economics are probably my two favorite classes. Social determinants of health, because I think there's a scam <laughs> in just the whole world concept that we know that it's bad for certain races and certain eth um, ethnicities and children geographically. Like we know it's bad as a country and we don't do anything. We don't do everything that we can do, but that's another video. Um, there is also... Well, health policy is going to be the last class I take, but I told you economics. There's research. That was intense. It was a good intense, though. Like, it was a lot of work, but it was a good intense. There's, I know I'm missing some classes, but anyhow, you're taking two classes every 10 weeks. You do get a break in summer. You have a winter break. Um, you get, you know, some days off around Thanksgiving. You get a spring break, but that's for the two-year program outside of the capstone classes it takes so people want to know like what what do i have to give up to get this because you always have to give up something and if you didn't watch wonder woman 1984 never mind <laughs> but <laughs> you get something you gotta give up something so i am a mom of three well actually four but my oldest is grown and out the house so three teenagers i work full-time in occupational health 
I, before COVID, I was doing things as, you know, part of social organizations, but I am like a, a member of WAPA and on that board. And I do, I'm an NCCPA ambassador. I'm trying to, I do a lot of stuff and I like to travel. So yes, you can totally have a full life and do this program. Now, there are some schedules that I don't think would be conducive to this if you don't have the time to put in the work because right now the discussions are due on Wednesday. You have to respond to at least two of your classmates by Sunday and that's every week that that is. And then add in the assignments. You may have um, a paper, a PowerPoint, some type of project that you need to put together where it has a specific rubric and that requires time. Most of the time, I don't want to say most of the time. So I know in the very beginning and they, of course, are taking into consideration some of our comments as we're going through the program. But in the beginning, you will have like your discussion posts due as well as those assignments. And that was a lot. And until this last semester, some of the instructors took that into consideration and then they made it where if the assignment was due on one week, then you didn't have a discussion post that week. That didn't happen last semester, which is another reason why it was very stressful because I'm trying to do all that work around the holiday. And let's see. So yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. People want to know, can you do this all in one day? No, you cannot just do it all in one day because it depends on how some classes are set up and how they want you to respond to your classmates. You may not have anybody to respond to in time. I am a procrastinator for some things. I try and work ahead sometimes, but I get into a funk in a mood where I just don't feel like doing it and I'm waiting. And then, you know, I'm up at you know, before the due, the due date, like an hour or two <laughs> within the time to complete the assignment. So, yeah, it doesn't always work out where you can just sit down in one day and do all the work. Plus, it's a lot of reading. You have to have peer review sources for your discussion polls, your responses, and your assignments. So if you don't have time in your schedule to just do, I mean, to do the work outside of just one day, this program probably, in my opinion, wouldn't work for you because I don't know how else you can, I mean, being honest, I don't know how you could do that. It takes anywhere from, I can spend a couple of hours, like two hours in a week for the assignment, that may be me underestimating real because I don't maybe four. So I'm gonna say like the least amount of hours I've had to spend in a class will be four. And that's to write my discussion, my post, get the information that I need to write it accurately in the reading assignment that goes along with it. Um, the most I would say like 20. Like sometimes I am putting in a lot of time to do the the work, and that's gonna be more so for those projects. And you just have to put a little bit at a time. I am very fortunate where in my job, I have some downtime in between where I can do some of my schoolwork. Um, but if I had been in my last job, I was thinking like, oh my gosh, I would not have made it. <laughs> I couldn't do this program because I was always exhausted and it was like an hour and a half commute. So I don't have the hour and a half commute, but I think that, I, I mean, I have the time to do it now because my job again, I try different things like trying to do it before work and I'm gonna be completely honest I'm not an early morning person so that quickly went out the window um I do try and get it going like right after work but I do most of my stuff while I'm at work it works for me and then I do stuff at home and then on the weekends you know I've set time I definitely have time still for my family and my kids uh, that's very important to me so if it requires me to stay up late one day so I can get all this stuff done to have a Saturday open where I'm not doing any homework, I also do that. Um, I would say like the best thing about the program is overall, um, the instructors are very communicative. They are understanding that we are all adults and we have lives outside of school. And while the expectations are high, there's you just got to communicate. And I think that is how it works for everything. It's a relationship. So I'm in a short-term relationship with A.T. Steele University and communication is key. So uh, I appreciate that because we, I think it's hard when you're growing, like I'm 37, y'all. And 
it was a lot for me to decide to come back to school. I definitely didn't want to come in and feel like I was being micromanaged or you're nitpicking. So overall, I would say that is one of the great things about AT Steele University's program. I also found the program to be more affordable and I like how the program was structured because I did not want to cram everything into one year. I know there are one year programs, but I, for me, that would be a lot. Um, let's see. Um, this is my thinking face because I'm trying to make sure I'm covering all the things that I've been asked different things in emails and whatnot. Do I think it's going to be worth it? Um, I think for me, because it's one of my personal goals and my long-term goals, I believe this is definitely going to be worth it. Do I think I'm going to get a pay raise? I think if I position myself to get a pay raise, may not necessarily be at my current position, but I believe that I could elevate my pay by making the right moves. And again, I never became a PA just because of money. That's so... Money is not what motivates me. Purpose definitely does. And um, so, yeah, I def I'm looking forward to being finished because then I feel like I can do a lot more <laughs> stuff. Like, um, like not read stuff I don't want to read. <laughs> I do have a better, a much better respect, though, for all the research that happens and all the articles that are produced in our medical journals because the work that goes into it is a lot. I am motivated to actually do more of that, but it'll be on topics that I like. For those of you wanting to know what my capstone is about, just let me know in the comments and then I'll go on about that in a different post because I never want to make my videos too long because you may miss some things. But let's see. I'm trying to make sure I cover every. Oh, I'm hoping that graduation is in person. I know that, you know, COVID is not gone and we're not free from that. I will, of course, like turn up for a virtual graduation as well. But I would love to be able to walk across the stage in my cap and gown and all that jazz. But yes. So if you have questions, or want me to talk about something I did not touch on in regards to the doctorate's program at A.T. Still University, please just drop it in the comments below. And in the description of this video, I will leave all my information that you need to know and ways to follow me on social media, all that jazz. And yeah, until next time, y'all.